What is up, people? And welcome to another episode of Kubernetes in the cloud. Today's cloud is going to be DigitalOcean. We're going to take a look at what it takes to get a Kubernetes cluster up and running on DigitalOcean cloud. If DigitalOcean is not your cloud provider, feel free to follow along anyway and learn about DigitalOcean. I'll be making other videos on Azure, AWS and Google as well. So we'll be keeping this tutorial simple. We'll be going back to basics. Now that, that means no cloud automation tools, no provisioning tools, um, no extra over complexities. We'll be keeping it basic, using the basic command line interface, get a Kubernetes up, cluster up and running and see what we can do with it. So without further ado, let's go. All right, so let's break this down. So the first thing we're going to do is log into DigitalOcean and create a free account. I'm gonna show you how to get a free account that's gonna give you $100 free credit and 60 days trial. Kubernetes on DigitalOcean is free to run. You only pay for the worker nodes and the infrastructure that you use, like load balancers and worker nodes, virtual machines. Then we're gonna take a look at the CLI, the command line interface used to talk to DigitalOcean. We're gonna use this um, CLI to log in to our free account and then what we're going to do is we're going to create this thing called a project now in digital ocean all your infrastructure is tied to a project a project allows you to have different groups of resources like development staging production so we're going to create a project and then what we're going to do is use the cli to put a Kubernetes cluster inside of our project. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna take a look at what we can do with this Kubernetes cluster, as well as run one worker node. We're gonna run one VM. A VM in DigitalOcean is called a droplet. We're gonna take a look at the different types of droplets you can deploy. We're also gonna take a look at the different regions and data centers that Kubernetes can be deployed in. We're then gonna deploy a Hello World application inside of that Kubernetes cluster, take a look at how to configure and work with the cluster we're also going to deploy a load balancer where we can send traffic to and we're going to run our application on this VM so let's get started now if you head over to DigitalOcean's website you can see that you can create an account sign up with email Google or github I'm going to put down a link in the description and if you click that link you'll be having free credit active uh, for your account that you create so you can go ahead and sign up you'll get a hundred dollars to try all of this stuff out as well as 60 day credit uh, for new accounts this will help us evaluate the kubernetes cluster as well as deploy some virtual nodes to the cluster and try it all out and see what we can do with it now it is important to mention that when you go through the sign up uh, process for every cloud provider you're going to face you're going to have to put your credit card details this is to protect the cloud provider against fraud and they basically do this to prove your identity now if you look at the documentation running kubernetes on digital ocean is pretty much free you only pay for what you use so you only pay for the nodes or the worker nodes the virtual machines that you add to your cluster these are called droplets in DigitalOcean and basically also if you spin up service of type load balancers um, DigitalOcean will charge you for load balancers as well as persistent volumes that are that are tied to block storage volume so you basically only get charged for what you use and this makes DigitalOcean's offering very very powerful and very unique so the first thing we're going to want to do is install and run the DigitalOcean CLI. Now the DigitalOcean CLI is very easy to run if you have Docker installed. So I like to install Docker to run all of these things on my machine so that I don't have to install the dependencies and it's very easy to get it up and running. Now, if you're not familiar with this channel, um, everything I do on this channel is on GitHub. The link is down below so you can follow along. So I have the Docker development YouTube series. In here, I have a Kubernetes folder and all the cloud providers are gonna be in here. So you can see I have a DigitalOcean folder getting started. So you you can basically follow along with everything I do. Everything I do is documented in this file. So we're going to be taking a look at the CLI. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the CLI in Docker. So I've got a terminal here. I'm just going to paste that. So I'm saying Docker run and I mount all the source code into the container. This will allow me to interact with anything I do um, on, the, on my file system inside of the container. So I mount that in and I make a working directory slash work. And I also wanna say I wanna run bash in there and I run the specific version of the CLI. So let's go ahead and press enter. Now, the other thing that this, this Docker file doesn't do um, is if we do ls slash app, 
the the CLI is actually put into an app folder. So to make it easy to run, I'm just going to move that into user local bin. That means I can now run do CTL and we see now we have the CLI available and we can start working. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch directories into this digital ocean folder. And you can also see if I do LS, we're now inside of the container inside this folder. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is sign into cloud.digitalocean.com, head down to API. And you can see here that we have no tokens set up yet. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and generate a new token and then give the token a name. So I'm just going to call it getting started and then I'm going to generate my token. Now, once we've gone ahead and created this token, we want to go ahead and copy that key and just keep it somewhere so we can use it for login. So you want to keep this token somewhere safe. I'm just going to create this as a temporary token so I can help you guys and show you how to log into the cloud um, and so we can get started. So the next bit we want to do is log into DigitalOcean. So we want to say DOCTL auth init and that's going to ask us for our access token which I'm going to grab and I'm just going to paste it down below and then I am logged in. You can also validate this by saying DOCTL auth list and we can see we have a current session um, context logged in now for digital ocean everything we do is tied to a project so we in order to get started we need to go ahead and create a project so I have some sample here you can run so in order to do that we say DOCTL projects create we pass in a name of the project and the purpose so we just say purpose testing so you can kind of give a little description of your project and what you want to do with it now that's going to go ahead and create a project and we're going to need this project ID in order to continue now before before we continue, um, feel free to play around with the with the CTL. If you type the the DOCTL, it pretty much um, is self-explanatory. It gives you all the list of available commands. So they have this concept of one-click deployment and one-click applications. They also have accounts, so you can manage accounts. You can authenticate like we just done. You can get like your account balances. You can look at billing history, compute. So you can do things like um, spin up droplets and nodes. You can spin up load balances, databases, and a bunch of things that DigitalOcean has to offer. We're going to take a look at the Kubernetes offering. So what we want to do is say DOCTL Kubernetes. And then we can see what we can do. There's cluster, so we can interact with Kubernetes cluster. We can also list options uh, of what we can do with Kubernetes cluster. So the first thing we need to do is gather our options. Now the options are a bunch of things. We need to gather what region we want to deploy in and also what Kubernetes clusters are available in those regions. So the first thing we're going to want to do is say DOCTL Kubernetes options. Let's see what options we have available. So we can we can run the regions command to get a list of regions that we're going to deploy our Kubernetes cluster in. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to say DOCTL Kubernetes options regions. And when we run this, we'll get a list of all the regions data centers that um, DigitalOcean has the avail availability of Kubernetes clusters. So you can pick the region that you're that is closest to your customer or whatever you want to pick. I'm going to go with um, Singapore in this example. So I'm going to pick the slug, which is the code of the of the region. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say DOCTL Kubernetes options versions. This is to see um, what version of Kubernetes is available. So we can see here the slug is the code of the of the version. It's 1.17.5. So we need to tell um, DigitalOcean this is the version we want to use. So we're going to use 1.17.5 and we're going to use Singapore as our region. So the other thing I said, I've, I've got a link here to the documentation of DigitalOcean Kubernetes. So what we want to do is we want to head over to um, that documentation because we want to get an idea of what virtual machines we can deploy. So they're called droplets. So if we click into them, we can see there's a bunch of different VM types that DigitalOcean offers. So there's a standard type, general purpose, CPU optimized, memory optimized. So you have to make a decision on what the best node is going to be for your workload. So in this example, I'm going to stick to the standard plan. Now, if we go down, we can see we also have different distributions. We have region availability. So I like to look at this regional availability matrix. So have a um, read through this so you can see what regions are available. Um, 
So if you deploy into certain regions, you might find that the VM type you want to use might not be available here. So we can see that in our Singapore region, we do have the standard droplet available. So the other thing you want to do is also is have a look at the droplets documentation. Have a look at the pricing um, for this as well. So they have a pricing page and this is where it gets really cool. So now you can see um, for the standard droplets, they have different specifications. So how much memory you want, how much vCPUs you want. So you can basically have a look at the cost and decide uh, what what is the best virtual machine for your for your task that you want to do and how much you're willing to pay for that virtual machine. So what I found is that we also have to look at what droplets are available in Kubernetes. So for example, this very small $5 a month droplet is not available for Kubernetes offering. The smallest I think we can go with is the second one, which is $10 a month. So if we type a DOCTL Kubernetes options, we can see that we've already checked the regions, we've checked the versions of Kubernetes available. Now let's check the sizes. So if you run the sizes command, it will actually tell you what sizes are available in their Kubernetes offering. So you can see, as I mentioned here, we have the S um, series. So the S series is the standard and we have one vCPU, two gigabytes. So we don't have that very small machine. So the smallest machine we can go with is a one vCPU, t uh, two gigabyte machine. So I'm going to grab that for our, for our demo. Now the next um, command we want to look at is DOCCTL, uh, Kubernetes cluster create. So this will tell us pretty much what we can do with this Kubernetes cluster. So you can see the, the create command has a bunch of things. So it has the count of nodes we want to run. So number of default nodes in the default pool. We can also provide a maintenance window. So this is like a, um, a time of day that we allow um, DigitalOcean to do maintenance on, this, on these droplets and cluster. We can also define a node pool. This is very cool. So in this demo, I'm just going to use the default node pool. But if you want to deploy different types of machines and different pools, feel free to use the, the node pool offering. So you can say, basically, I want one node pool with a bunch of standard machines. And then maybe I want another node pool with maybe more CPU based machines. So that allows you to do that. That's that's very cool. Then also we have the region flag. So what region and data center we want to put the nodes in. And then we also have have the size, the size of the nodes. We can also specify the version of the Kubernetes cluster. And the other cool thing is we can specify the VPC. So if you have any existing um, VPC networks inside DigitalOcean, you can deploy your nodes within that same virtual network. So what I've done here is I've put together a, a command you can use. This is my create command. So let's take a look at that command. So we say DOCTL Kubernetes cluster create the name of the cluster. Then we specify the version of Kubernetes, the count of our nodes. So we want one machine and we want a small machine and we want to deploy to the Singapore region. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that, paste that in the terminal, and then we're going to go ahead and kick that off. So now if I refresh the portal, we can see that if I go to the getting started page, uh, getting started project, you can see that um, there are no droplets in here yet. But if we go over to the Kubernetes page, we can see we have a cluster uh, DGO getting started. It's started to create and if we go ahead and look at the terminal we can see the cluster is now provisioning. So this will take roughly about five minutes for the cluster to become accessible. So now we can see our cluster has been created. It has also gone and added our kubeconfig file um, to our container. So the kubeconfig file is here, so we can actually go ahead and access the cluster. Now the digital ocean dashboard is one of the coolest I've seen so far. You can see our cluster here is all green, it's all good to go. And if we head over to the nodes section, we can actually see our virtual machine, our node pool that's up. So we've got this default pool and we have one machine running inside here. They also have a Kubernetes dashboard. You can add additional node pool. They have this thing called insights, which is pretty cool showing you the CPU usage, load averages, memory and disk IO usage, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also get advanced metrics. So you can look at DigitalOcean advanced Kubernetes metrics dashboard as well. They also have a link to the Kubernetes dashboard. There's a bunch of actions here. So you can actually download a cube config from here as well. So I'm going to leave this with you to, to play around with. It's very cool. So how do we access our Kubernetes cluster? So because I'm running in a container here, I don't have kubectl. So I put a command here. What I'm going to
going to do is I'm going to copy this command and I'm going to go ahead and download kubectl quickly just using curl. I'm going to grab the latest version of kubectl and then I'm going to move it into user local bin and then we can go ahead and say kubectl get nodes. Now because we've created our cluster the doctl has already put the um, the cube config file into our folder but let's say you want to access the file yourself you can also run the command you can run the ctl kubernetes cluster cube config save for that cluster name so we can also do that um, to grab a new kubernetes config file and if you want to take a look at the config file you can do uh, cp and you can copy the file from its default location into the current folder so if we do that i'll just show you an example if i do that we can copy the file into this folder where we are now this context so if i click it you can have a look at what that file looks like if i do kubectl get nodes you can see we have one node running um, in our kubernetes cluster in our default node pool it's ready and we can start deploying applications to it now in this tutorial video, I'm just showing you how to get a Kubernetes cluster up and running. I'm also just going to show you how to deploy a basic Hello World application, provision a load balancer, and make an application work in the cluster as well. So this is not a CI/CD tutorial, but feel free to stay tuned as I'll be making multiple guides on different CI/CD tooling to deploy applications like microservices to clusters running in the cloud. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and create a new namespace called example app. The namespace is what we're going to use to house all our Kubernetes resources. So if I go one folder up, we're in the Kubernetes directory over here. And I have a bunch of things here. I have secrets, I have services, I have config maps and deployments. So if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, check the links down below to my Kubernetes guide, where I basically show you how to install a Kubernetes cluster on Windows and Mac um, using Docker for Windows and also how to install and configure kubectl, how to do deployments, how to um, interact with the command line and, and access objects such as config maps, secrets, ingresses, and services. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a basic deployment here. So I'm gonna say kubectl apply in, the def in that namespace example app, I'm gonna apply a secret.yaml. And if we take a look at what that secret looks like, for those of you who don't know, a secret is just an object in Kubernetes. So I have the secret.json that my application needs in order to work. And the other thing that my application needs is a config map. So I'm going to say kubectl apply in that same namespace, I'm going to apply a config map. Config maps are basically just configuration files that your application might need. So in the config map folder, I have config map.yaml. So you can take a look at that if you're interested. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say kubectl apply in the example app namespace, I'm just going to apply a deployment.yaml. Now this is going to tell Kubernetes um, what application to deploy um, to the cluster. So if we take a look at the deployment folder, deployment.yaml, this is the, called the desired state. So we tell Kubernetes we want um, two replicas of our application. Um, we tell it uh, how to deploy it in terms of a rolling update strategy. We also go ahead and say what container image to deploy. So I just got a Hello World Python application running on port 5000. You can also do other cool things like you can tell Kubernetes how to monitor your application. So liveliness probes are really important to tell Kubernetes how to check the life of the application. So Kubernetes will automatically restart this app if it becomes unresponsive. Then we also have resource limits that we can specify. And the last bit is uh, plain and simple. We're just mounting a secret and the config that we've just deployed. So now if I do kubectl in the example app namespace, I do get deploy. We can see that we have a deployment running with two out of two um, instances we can then check those instances by saying kubectl get pods and we can see we have two um, pods up and running now how do we access these applications from outside so the last bit we're going to do in order to do that is we're going to create a service of type load balancer so we say kubectl apply services and we're going to apply the services.yaml uh, file in the services folder so that file is right over here and you can see here that we're saying to Kubernetes, we want a service of type load balancer, and we want to call it example service, and we want to run on port 80, and we want to uh, direct all traffic to port 5000 
to our application. Now to check this in Kubernetes, then once it's up and running, you can say kubectl get server. And this will show us the service that we've just deployed. Now we can see that the external IP is pending. This is because Kubernetes is cloud native. So it doesn't matter what Kubernetes cluster and what cloud provider we deploy this to. Every cloud provider has a load balancer. So whether you deploy this YAML file to Google, Azure, AWS, or DigitalOcean, Kubernetes will figure out that it's running in DigitalOcean and it will go and provision a DigitalOcean type load balancer. So we can confirm this by going back to our portal and we can look at networking. And then in the networking page, we can look at load balancers and we can see that a load balancer is being provisioned right here. So now we can see our load balancer is up and running. So we can basically go ahead and copy that IP address and we can add that into the browser. And you can see here we have Hello World now running. So we have an application running through a load balancer in the cloud into our Kubernetes cluster. Um, and we have two copies of containers running there. And there we go. Eventually we got an IP address um, from Kubernetes. Now the last bit, what we want to do is we want to make sure we clean this all up when we're done. Otherwise you're going to run out of your credits and they're going to start charging you. So what, in order to clean up, we're going to say DOCTL Kubernetes clusters delete. So we're going to go ahead and delete um, the cluster. So if we run that command, it's going to say, are you sure? We're going to say yes. And it's going to take a couple of minutes to delete the cluster. We go to Kubernetes. We can see that cluster is now gone. And if we go to networking, the one thing we have to remember is that the load balancer is still running and you'll be charged. I think it's roughly $10 for the load balancer. So what you want to do is make sure you go to this load balancer and click destroy. This will just make sure that there's no um, extra charges if you leave things running, because if you leave things running in cloud, you'll be charged for it. Now you can see how easy that was to get a Kubernetes cluster running in the cloud. Now remember to stay tuned for all my videos on other cloud providers so you can learn about multiple cloud providers. And let me know down in the comments below what sort of cloud providers you'd like me to cover and whether you want me to cover on-prem as well. And as always, like and subscribe and until next time peace